Now we get into large language models, which is a big, big part of what this course is really about. Let's start by talking about some of just the terminology that you're going to see when dealing with large language models, and in particular, foundation models. Now, some of the code that I have in here does make use of OpenAI, so you should have your key configured in the, the keys or the secrets section if you're using Colab. If you're using something else, you'll just need to either put it in here or get it from an environmental variable. Usually it's a bad idea to put an actual API key right into source code, so be careful certainly with that. So foundation models, these are things like Llama and others that you, that you hear of, GPT, Mistral, all these various models, different families of models. And how do you evaluate all these different models? Well, there's several key characteristics that you'll want to think about. First of all, just the weights. Is the model open or closed? Many of these models are closed, like GPT. You cannot get the actual weights for GPT-4.0 to download and to run on systems that are outside of OpenAI. You're gonna be bound to their APIs. And that's just simply the nature of of using that sort of a model. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but if you do want the weights open, you'll want to look at something more like like Llama or like um, Mistral. The number of weights in the foundation model, if they even disclose that, more and more the closed models are not really disclosing the number of weights in them. The weights are sort of a proxy of how intelligent the neural network is. More weights, more intelligence, but that's becoming less and less true. So we'll, we'll look at the MMLU, which is one of the many benchmarks to tell how smart a model actually is. You're gonna also hear a lot about tokens. Tokens are basically the individual units that you of, of information that the models deal with. For humans, you might think of this as characters, like A, B, C. Tokens are a little bit bigger than characters. They're kind of common parts of words, but fundamentally everything can be expressed as these tokens. The number of tokens that you're sending to the LLM and it's sending back to you is how you're billed. So that tells how expensive these are in terms of what what cost you're going to see. So if you're in this for this class, I recommend that you'll probably need about $100 in OpenAI credits for the tokens. That's why we look at two particular model types, GPT-4 and 40 and GPT-40 mini, and I recommend using mini for really just about everything in this course because that will keep your costs under control and it is really very very capable. So let's look at some of the common large language models that you'll have. This is across a variety of vendors. Those first two rows, those are the ones we're dealing with primarily in this class because we're using, we're using GPT-40, we're using OpenAI. You can see the open or closeness listed there. The score that they got on the MMLU, you'll see that the current reigning pro is Gemini which is Google's offering. That's very much an arms race. That may be a different answer by the end of this course. And this is the first time that I have run this course. And just from what I did in the spring semester before, uh, I had to update a few things already as GPT-40 came onto the scene and this very, very changing dynamic changed. So let's... Let's look at some of the other, the context window. This is a very important consideration. I think of this, I mean, the context window, that's the only way that the LLM, if you're using a foundation model, actually remembers things, is actually able to kind of remember that conversation as you're going. Basically, the input, the output, and any memory that's coming in between has to fit into that context window. So the bigger the context window, certainly the, the better. You can see that the two models that we're dealing with store about 93 pages. So we'll, at the very end, we'll see how you can fine tune the model and actually upgrade its knowledge to include what you're wanting to use it for. That tends to be a little more ex expensive 
and you may not need to fine tune. Say you are dealing with a corporate document that is 50 pages. You can just load the whole thing right into the context window. However much of that context window you use though, that is what you're billed for. You can see Gemini is kind of gigantic. Uh, so Gemini is, is really, really taking some of these things to, to the next level and the arms race will certainly continue there. You'll also notice that it's pretty common that they provide different sizes of these models. That's for cost savings. And if you really need a response quick, the less expensive ones, the smaller ones will be faster, but they will not be as smart as the, as the, um, the more advanced ones. Claude is another one that's from Anthropic. You see that a lot on the Amazon platform. Llama is open source, that's from Meta. It does really, really very well. You can, you can run it in your own data center or you can run it in API through the cloud. Amazon has that one as well. Another one, Mistral 7B, that is a small large language model. I can run it on a laptop and have, and it is surprisingly smart for its relatively small size. It is a very inexpensive, but you can also see its relative intelligence ranked to these others of 60, 60.1. So think of the MMLU as sort of like an IQ measure. And I use the term IQ very deliberately because IQ is a general measure of human knowledge, but far, far from perfect and fitted to a, to a different, to a specific theme. There's multiple tests for these large language models. I tend to use MM, MMLU as sort of a, a general um, line if I'm not going to be looking at multiple. Now let's talk about cost. The cost that you see down here, 15 cents versus five bucks. And this is for a million tokens. So I, I don't even know how many tokens we would necessarily go through in the entire run of this course, but that's a big price difference. And um, certainly it's not, you're not gonna break the bank by calling GPT-40, the big one, um, but be aware of that. Don't use GPT-40 on your whole, or you might well be running out of your $100 well before the class is, is over. And we'll see some specific information on how many tokens different things are taking. Temperature is something that you will see as you request information. This is the amount of creativity that you want the model to show. So here I'm doing GPT-40 Mini, like you'll see almost all the examples. And by the way, if you're reading this in, in the future, it could be uh, like maybe over the summer when I haven't updated it, you may well be seeing that there's a new model here. And I may update this and not update the videos yet, because believe me, if they just flip this forward to a model version number, I'm not gonna go re-record all the video numbers just so that this thing that we're flipping through, you'll. but when you go to the GitHub repositories, you'll see what I feel is the most up-to-date model. And the furthest that ever gets out of date is maybe the summer semester, but I'm often using the summer semester to update to, this, to the latest, latest and greatest. So the temperature, what it does is that's how creative you want it to be. If you're having it write a book for you, you probably want it more creative. If you're getting facts and figures, you probably want a zero temperature where it is not putting much creativity in there and it, it will give you the most consistent sort of answers back. This is an example here of where I'm, I'm just telling it to give you the five most populous countries in the world with their GDP. And you can see it often, it likes to output Markdown. So if you can interpret Markdown, that is useful from a display standpoint. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on all the new material that I put on for this course, as well as into the future uh, and different AI projects that I like to take on. Thank you for watching.